Welcome to another tutorial on Windows PowerShell. On lesson 16, I briefly went over importing and exporting data. In that tutorial, I briefly covered a bit of files operations. Today we will go over files and folder operations in depth. I am using the PowerShell 7 terminal, version number 7.3.7. If you would like to learn how to set up the latest version of PowerShell, please watch my tutorial one in this series. What I need to do right now is to move to this folder, this folder for SAN001 user, because I want to create all my test files and folders for this demonstration in this location. To do that, I can use either commandlet set dash location and then I can tell it to go where I need to go in this case let's say C or you can also use the alias which is the CD alias and then tell this uh, terminal to you know, go where I, we need to go. So I need to go in here. So I can do CD that, and that will get me to the C user SAN001. So if you want to set your PowerShell terminal location, which is the current or present working directory to wherever on your device or even your network, what you need to do is either use the set location commandlet or CD alias and then you can give the either exact location like I did right here, or you can just move one uh, step at a time uh, by just giving uh, each directory one at a time like that. So it's just a bit of a, uh, you know, introduction on moving around on PowerShell, which I have already covered in my previous tutorial, but this is a beginner series for PowerShell. So that's why I'm just re-emphasizing the important concepts so it will be back of it will be in your back of your brain right so that's why so i'm going to clear this screen right now because i'm in the cor uh, correct location i'm in c users san 001 and i am want to save all the files and folders i'm creating under c users san 001 and why why is this location i just randomly selected that you can select any location you like the first topic we're going to cover today is the creating files and folders so to create a file or any folder, we use a commandlet called new item, which is used to create a either a directory, which is also known as a folder sometimes, by passing the information that required to create that directory, uh, either using the switch path, or uh, we can actually, uh, you know, uh, do uh, the new, um, you know, the item type. So. What I mean by that, I'm going to cover it right now. Uh, so let's say I want to create a, a new item right here. So I can go new item, but I don't need to enter the entire uh, uh, you know commandlet. I can remember I can use a tab. So I press IT then tab and it completed. And in here, I can specify the path in which this needs to be created this new item so even if i'm not in this particular directory i can specify that with a switch so the switch is going to be a dash and then if i press p and tab it fill out what i need so that's the path so by using this switch with the new item commandlet you can create a new folder or a file uh, with either a specific extension such as .txt or no extension, uh, you know, using this method, like uh, using this, um, uh, you know, code. So new item is a commandlet path is we are, we are specifying where this is supposed to go. So I'm going to go, um, let's say, um, I want it in, let's do it explicitly. So first, so C users and I want to put it in SAN001 and I'm going to call it test folder. And then 
I can specify what this for, uh, should be because if I press enter right now here, what will happen is basically it's going to create a file that is not a folder. So let's do that, let's try that. So if I press enter here, it just created a file. So on the left hand side, please watch my, uh, sorry, the right hand side, please watch this screen right here. It shows on this location, it just created this called test folder. So I'm gonna delete that again. I'm gonna show you again. So if I clear the screen, if I enter this without specifying what this should be, if I press enter, it just create a, gonna create a folder, sorry, a file, it called test folder, but it's just a file not associated with anything. If I double click on this, it'll tell, hey, how do you would like to open this? Because Windows doesn't know what this is. I mean, what is it should be associated with? Obviously you can open it with Notepad, for example, uh, or you can open it with a, you know, suitable application, but it's just a file. It's file with no extension. So if I go to properties in here, for example, uh, so more options, uh, properties. See, there is no association to any programs here. So if I delete that, uh, if I delete that file, what that means is this basically the new item commandlet basically just gonna create a new item. It doesn't need to know it's a folder or a file or whatever, even though we want to create a folder. So how do I create a folder? We can go new item, uh, the, this path, uh, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Uh, and then we can use a switch called item type. So again, switch is a dash. So I'm gonna go item type and I want a directory. So I'm gonna again make it a little bit smaller so it's easy for you guys to see. So by using this uh, switch item type directory, I am explicitly dis defining this should be a directory. Now if I press enter, it just created a directory in or a folder in right here. It says it's a, it's right now it's colored in blue. So in Windows PowerShell 7, um, typically when it displays a directory, it has a D at the front right here uh, uh, and at the very beginning of the mode. So the mode is a directory and it's typically uh, highlighted in blue. So we know it's a directory also because on the right hand side, we saw that directory got created right here. It says test folder and if I open it, there you go, it's a folder. Now, another thing is that in this example, I use the explicit path because I explicitly defining where the path is. But you don't necessarily have to. Like, because we are in the C users SAN001, this is kind of redundant. So you can, if you are in the particular location, simply delete the rest of this and create the new directory, new folder uh, this way as well. So right now there is a new folder already in there. So if I try to create it, if I press enter, it will gonna give me an error message saying that the folder, the test folder already exists because it is trying to create in the C user SAN001 under the name test folder, but the test folder already exists. So, but if I delete that, that's another feature of PowerShell. It checks the directory exists before it's created by default. So, because the directory existed, before I deleted here, you know, it came back with an error message. So now if I go, there you go. It just created test folder right here. Again, if I try to create it again now with the same name, it automatically checks whether the test folder, the test for this name, uh, you know, a directory or, a, you know, in this case, the folder, uh, also known as a directory, exist in that location before it's try to create it. That's why it gives me this nice error message. The new item cannot be created because it's the folder already exists. So having said that, you can also actually remove this dot backslash as well. I do uh, that dot uh, backslash because out of habit, because uh, whenever I do the, um, you know, whenever I try to create folders and whenever I do anything with Windows PowerShell, I 
uh, you do this thing because this is sometimes uh, is useful. It's kind of way saying like, make sure it is creating in that location. So if I do this without that dot backslash, still create the test folder right here. So you can either explicitly define where it needs to be created, or you can put dot backslash if you are in the current location, with location where you need to be, uh, you want to create this folder, or you can even get rid of that part and then simply give the folder name. As long as you are in the current location, correct location, it will be created in the correct location. Typically on my PowerShell scripts that I use at work as well as for other purposes, I put the explicit path whenever it is possible because it is sometimes you are saving these files or creating these files on a network location, a network path, and you have to give the complete path because the script may be running in the local client device but the files and folders need to be created in a remote uh, network path. And that's why I use the complete path whenever I typically use this type of code in my PowerShell. But for this example, for this tutorial, I will be just using uh, this part so that it, my, code, my line of code is not too long and going off the page right here. So I'm gonna clear the screen here. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I will be using uh, the backslash, dot backslash for everything cover, we're gonna cover uh, hereafter. Just because of, I just want to keep everything consistent. Again, you don't need this dot backslash, but I'm gonna use it uh, for everything uh, I'm going to create uh, in this uh, example. So again, you saw the duplicate error. If I try to press enter here, it checks automatically and it gives me a nice red text duplicate uh, error saying that the folder already exists. So don't, uh, you know, you don't recreate the folder on top of each other. Now, let's look at how we can create a file. Okay, so now I, I already created a folder. Now I want to create a file. So how can I do that? It's the same thing. So similar to, uh, let's not clear the screen. So similar to this, you can still use the same new item. And now in order to create a file, I can then specify if I want to, uh, you know, if uh, what kind of, uh, you know, file I want to create. So for example, let's say I want a .txt file, okay? But because we are explicitly defining the file, so let's put the file inside this test folder. So I'm gonna put backslash because I'm not inside the test folder here in my PowerShell terminal. I have to define from here onwards. So I'm gonna defining that and say inside the test folder, I want to create test file. Now I can do this way, txt, text file txt. And for the item type, I can simply leave it blank. And will it create a text file? Yes, it will. Because if I go inside the test folder, currently there are no files in here, but if I press enter here, it just created a .txt file. And if you look at here, it clearly is a text file. You can see that it says text document, and if I double click on it, it's nicely open in Microsoft uh, Notepad which is the default program for .txt files. Even though that I have not explicitly defined the item type, we didn't use the item type switch like we did when we were creating the folder here, it knew it needs to create a .txt file because we are telling it to create .txt file right here. So because Microsoft, the PowerShell 7, the window, Microsoft Windows PowerShell 7 is smart enough to know that as soon as you put .txt, it has to be a text file, it can't be anything else. But if you want to explicitly define as a file, you can do that too. So if I go text file, uh, let's say, let's call this uh, test file one, I can actually use the item type still. And I can put file. And if I press enter, that would work too. 
see the text it still created that text file but because like i said because we are saying it has to be .txt after this name that we have given to it it knows it automatically it is going to be a .txt file and it's going to create it so you don't need to have item type when you are creating a specific file with a associated extension however you do need the item type whenever you are creating a folder because otherwise it's just going to create that you know the the, the blank um, uh, unassociated uh, you know file that's just going to be something like this see it's not associated with anything it's the file type is just a file you know so if I click on it double click on it see it's going to give you that error so keep that in mind um, you don't need to explicitly define item type if you put the extension you do need to define explicitly item type the item type switch if you are creating something like a folder so I'm gonna clear this screen again because the next thing I'm going to show you how you can uh, copy data uh, within your uh, folder uh, such as copying files and folders. So I'm going to go back in here to our, uh, I'm going to go one up. So I'm back at C users sand uh, zero, uh, zero, zero, 001. So same location so we can see what's happening. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to show you how you can do copying files and folders using PowerShell 7. So again, I'm on the PowerShell 7 terminal. Uh, so for copying file, um, just like, a, you know, creating a new item, it's going to be a verb noun pair. So it's basically copy item. So that's how you basically copy files. So I'm what I'm going to do uh, first, I'm going to create a folder again. Uh, uh, we have a folder right here. So test folder, uh, the folder we previously created and it has some files in it. Uh, what uh, we will do, we will create a few files. So I'm going to uh, uh, delete this one, uh, delete. And I'm just going to uh, create a bunch of random files. I'm going to rename this one. Uh, let's say uh, rename. I will also uh, show you rename in a few seconds as well using PowerShell. But for now, I'm going to do doc1.txt. And I'm going to do here doc2.txt. And uh, you can create a new text document doc3.txt and so on and so forth so you can put bunch of files like this so uh, let's create a few more so I have one two three four these are four text files okay now let's copy this folder using this co uh, copy item um, you will soon know why I created these uh, files uh, inside the folder. Uh, so for now, just remember there are files inside this folder that we are trying to copy. So I'm going to go one up here. So remember this folder is no longer empty. It has some files in it and you'll soon learn why I did that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the test folder to test folder two. The reason why I'm doing that is because you can't um, copy test folder to test folder. It should give you an error message because you can create two fold the same two folders with the same name or two directories with the same name in the same location, right? So that's why. So I'm going to use copy item, and again I'm going to use the parentheses or the, the quotation. Sorry, single quotation. Uh, just like before, uh, inside the single quotation, I'm going to go dot backslash test folder okay so that's the so that's the one I'm trying to copy and now I want to copy this to test folder 2 so if, again I'm going to put the quote quotation single quotation 
you can do double quotation too so folder two um yeah just call it folder two quotation now if i press enter no look at your right hand side it will create a folder too basic by creating uh, by copying test folder uh, into test folder two there you go however however what it did is basically copying all the properties of this test folder as it is including the security and uh, all the configurations and everything of that test folder and creating that this folder with that same exact configuration what it didn't do is your files remember i had files inside test folder i copied the test folder using test this uh, command let copy item but however when you look at inside the test folder too it's not there that because unless you tell the powershell 7 explicitly in your code in your script to copy the files contained within this folder when you are copying a folder it's just going to copy the permissions and other properties in the here to that new folder so if you look at this and if you look at this these two should be identical so it's just basically this copy item a commandlet went into the test folder properties and configurations and copy all of that to test folder to created this test folder to and basically mirror it or copied it but it did not copy anything inside that folder so what if i want to copy everything inside this folder to the new folder because that's what most likely you will be doing so if i create another folder so I'm going to call this folder number three because I can create folder number two now because it's already created here. It's going to give me an error message. So if I do folder number two, look at this. It's just going to, it's, it's, it's just going to overwrite this and then put the folder inside, not error message, sorry. It's going to put the folder inside a folder. That's, that's not good. So that's a caveat in uh, uh, PowerShell. Again, I forgot to mention it actually doesn't give you error message. I miss, misspoken. Now, with copy item, it will copy, but it will copy onto the same um, thing. If you do that, it just copy, see, inside that uh, folder already. Uh, now, if I do, uh, if I go back in here, sorry, if I go back in here and press uh, dot backslash and press enter, well, guess what? It's still gonna do the same thing. If I do it again, it gives you an error message. So that's a that's a little bit of a uh, not a caveat. It's just something that you should know, right? So if you copy this one again for the second time, it'll still copy, but it'll copy inside here. The test folder get copied inside here. But if you do it again for this another time, it'll give you an error message. That because of it depending on where this is item is being being copied to. It's just something to keep in back of your mind. So I'm gonna clear this. So what we use is this, and. Um, well, it didn't work, right? It didn't actually copy what I want to copy. So I'm going to create uh, the folder number three. But um, this time, I'm going to put a backslash on the main folder that we have here at the front, and I'm going to put a star. What that is going to do, uh, which is the shift uh, number eight key on your Windows keyboard, it will go into this folder, copy to folder three, but it will also include everything contained within it. So if I press enter right now, what it has done is it will create a folder three, but you expect to see it, it will create a folder three. And then, uh, you know, uh, have all the items contained within them, right? Now, notice what happened here. Since the test folder three is created in a way that didn't define how this should be created, the PowerShell went ahead and created just a file with zero bytes in it. So why did it do that? Because it didn't it didn't know this folder actually exists. It doesn't have this folder. So because of that, 
it just created a file and then it tells you that file is useless because it doesn't contain all this information. It just created an empty file just like before because it doesn't know that's what it needs to do. But if I go folder number two, which is already created, but now use the same commandlet and press enter. Now, if I go to folder number two, it has all the files that we need. So keep that in mind when you are doing PowerShell scripting. If you want to copy everything in your in a folder, all the documents in a folder to a new folder, you have to have that folder already created or else you're going to end up with what I have end up here, which is basically a test folder three, which is an empty file, nothing in it. It's not a folder. It's not de defined as a folder either. So I'm going to delete that empty file uh, again. It's very important concept. So if I delete this folder two as well, so I have test folder with four files. I'm going to repeat that process again. If I go here and do this, it just create going to create a blank file. It doesn't contain all the files I need, but instead what you have to do is you have to first create the test folder by copying the test, uh, you know, uh, they're copying the original folder. Uh, properties and everything so now you have this test folder now the now the there is a folder created with the proper properties and permissions then you can go ahead and use the backslash star press enter now it will copy all the items contained within it obviously you can use the for loop if uh, a statements etc etc while loop to do this but for now just remember that you need to have the folder created in order to copy items contained within a folder. So that's a very important concept that you need to learn and you need to understand when you are doing, uh, you know, uh, PowerShell scripting. What if I want to only copy one file to the new directory? Like I don't want all of these files being copied here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete all of these files in this uh, new uh, folder, uh, delete. And then I'm only going to copy whatever the files I want. So I can still do that with the copy item. So remember the folder has already been created. I just need to copy something, right? So I'm going to do copy item just like before. And I'm going to select the path where the uh, current uh, folder we need to get the information from. But in here, instead of putting a star, which it will take everything from that folder and copy to folder number two, I'm going to press either tab where I can cycle through all the files contained within them. Remember, tab is a very useful key in Windows PowerShell where you can tab through either uh, commandlet items, uh, commandlets, uh, complete your uh, script pretty much, complete your code. So in here, let's say I want to copy the third file, doc3.txt, uh, and then I can go space and I can use the switch call uh, destination. Uh, or I can simply give it like I can use the destination um, switch or I can simply say I just want to copy this to the test uh, folder uh, 2 and if I press enter here what that did is basically copied only the doc2 See, it didn't copy everything because I don't want all of these things. I just want one thing. You can do that by simply explicitly defining it at the very beginning where it's copying from. You can also notice that when I tap through, see how it always had the dot here. So it's 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 one of those things, uh, you know, uh, in PowerShell. That's why I use the dot backslash because that's what the default it's set to at the very beginning. So if I uh, also delete, uh, if I remove these things, if I remove that dot backslash, 
and if I say I want to copy let's say one and press enter it's, it would still work like if I go back in here the doc one should be there yeah, it is there right here so either or uh, either this uh, code or this uh, this code in your script will copy a specific item to that existing folder now there is also remember the destination switch so I can also use the destination switch and then I can tell uh, where it needs to be copied to so I can go um, oops uh, go test folder the test folder 2 and then let's say I want um, maybe uh, 2 and then press enter that will still work so if you go here it has you know uh, the one two three that we copied three two one so this is one two three one two three is copied so one two three is copied so again this destination switch is useful sometimes because when your code get very complicated and the code may be on a server or something and you're pulling information from different locations and you're putting stuff into different location you bet you it is better practice that you use this destination switch but again you don't need to use that similar to this dot backslash I always use the dot backslash because that's the default in uh, PowerShell 7 but however you don't need it uh, you can just simply give the folder uh, name uh, if you are in that particular location uh, as well if anybody asks what this is this is basically called uh, copying or copying a copy recursively uh, but it's a technical term you don't need to know much about it it's just going to basically copy one uh, to the other now the next thing I'm going to explain it to you is that in a situation where you need to copy a specific file but you don't really you know you don't really care about what that file is except you need to pick specific file type so you have a bunch of specific files but you need to pull up specific file type into the new folder how do i do that so let's go to my old folder the original folder let's create a bunch of files so i'm going to create a new folder uh, sorry new file uh, let's call the bitmap image so right here so if i go to properties bitmap image as dot bmp so i'm going to call uh, this one img one it's because of it's easy for me to figure out so I'm gonna create new and I'm gonna create another bitmap image img2 and let's create another bitmap image img3 so I have three bitmap images I have four text files so if I go back to my uh, second folder right here let's delete these folders that I uh, copied right here so this folder is empty it's test folder 2 it's sitting there and I don't want all of this document uh, dot, sorry text files and the image files copy to here I just want to copy just the image file let's say I want to extract just the images can you do that yes you can do that with copy item remember the test folder here has four dot txt files and three dot bmp files so if you go to properties right here dot bmp and if you go to properties right here and that dot txt so i just want to copy everything with dot bmp so how i can do that so if i go in here so currently it's empty you can use the same command let so i'm going to clear this first using the copy item commandlet just like before this time I'm going to use a switch called filter so if I put a dash remember that's how you can get the filters for your commandlets and then what I'm going to do I'm going to filter out based on the file extension so I will put a star which is mean which mean anything uh, from that side in any text uh, any file name before that it doesn't matter it's gonna pick so we're gonna put dot and do, uh, put uh, b 
mp because that's the file uh, extension for images so this is basically saying any file that contain a dot bmp please copy right but then i need to have the the folder in which needs to be uh, copying has to be done from so it's going to be again test folder and it will be then copied and you need to have a star in here as well so everything in that folder but we only going to filter out the .bmp files and then put a space in here and i'm going to put a quotation again and i'm going to go test folder 2 and what this statement basically is saying is copy items but filter out only the .bmp files not take anything else into account except with .bmp files in this folder and then copy it into the folder number two now folder number two is currently empty and folder number one the original one uh, the fol test folder has three bmp files right here bmp files but i don't want any of these other files so i'm telling it to do exactly that and if i press enter here what that did it just copy the image files notice it did not copy my .txt files because i'm explicitly defining here to just copy the .bmp files again you can also use the path uh, switch in here as well like you can actually put in here the switch path right here it is still a valid statement so again if you want to explicitly define uh, this further there are additional switches associated with copy item uh, this will work as well so if i delete right here if i press enter still go ahead and copy those images right here as well so either this statement or this statement can be used to copy specific items from one folder to another uh, but keep in mind that um, you know um, it's uh, you know the, these uh, ex explicit definitions and the switches may be useful when you have very complicated long uh, scripts on your windows powershell so you know it sometimes a good to have all of these switches added as opposed to not having them uh, in here for example so it, it's it's a, it's a decision you can make when you are working with windows powershell as you get more experience with working with uh, and uh, with windows powershell uh, you will have certain habits like such as um, i'm putting this dot uh, backslash all the time um, based on your preferences and how you handle your scripts so that's um, everything for that section the next thing i'm going to cover is deleting files and folders so the next item we will cover is deleting files and folders if i copy uh, sorry if i clear this uh, window the terminal by CLS just like before to delete files in Windows PowerShell you use a commandlet so for delete we use a commandlet called remove item so if you type remove dash uh, item that will get you the delete commandlet so the delete commandlet is remove item so just like before to remove or delete something using this commandlet we have to define what we need to remove so we can use the quotation again so i'm going to use single quotation again you can use double quotation if you like um, and i'm going to remove let's say the test folder too so i'm going to define it uh, i'm going to do test folder too so that's the one i want to remove now if I press enter here, it will not remove test folder 2. It will give you a message on your terminal. The reason for that is it will warn you that there are files inside this folder. So it want to make sure the PowerShell wants to make sure that you really want to delete this folder. So if I go test folder 2 here and press enter, it gives me a message. It can say it is asking you to confirm as the user, hey, do you want to remove because this folder contain items in it so if i press here uh, y or a what's going to happen is, is simply go ahead and delete this folder so if i if i uh, put no n here it just simply not delete it at all it just leave it there 
So it allows you to, you know, it does the check whether there are files in here. And because there are files in here, it just won't let you do it. It just give you a, give you a message saying, hey, do you want to delete this? Do you really want to delete this before you uh, proceed? So obviously, if you select uh, Y or A, either O option, right here, it tells you what it does. If I press enter, uh, see, it got rid of that test folder too. I'm gonna simply recreate that test folder uh, by right clicking and then let's go copy, oh, right click copy paste uh, i'm just going to create this as test rename it as uh, folder 2 so now uh, we have brought back that test folder but every all the other files are from the test uh, original folder is there as well but now what if i want to like you know the delete this uh, folder but i don't want the windows uh, you know, uh, my Microsoft uh, Windows uh, PowerShell to give me that warning. You can do that. To do that, simply you use a switch. So you put a dash and recurse. So what this switch is going to do, it's going to prevent this message from appearing and it's just simply going to delete it. So press enter. There you go. It's gone. So if you put remove item and the folder contains something in it, it will give you a warning message by default in Windows PowerShell 7. However, if you use the recurse, um, you know, switch with this uh, type of, you know, with this line of uh, code, instead of this line of code, what it will do, it will simply go ahead and remove that folder completely. Now, if I create another folder here, I'm simply gonna create a new folder. Let's say test folder, let's say three. Now, if I go remove item, and if you go test folder three, right? And since this test folder doesn't have anything in it, if I now press enter, it will simply go ahead and delete that test folder. See, the test folder is gone now. Because there is nothing in that folder, the PowerShell is not concerned with deleting that folder. So it just go ahead and delete it even without the recurse switch associated with it. So that's how you can remove or delete a folder using uh, the PowerShell uh, PowerShell terminal and you can use these things in your code whenever you're writing a script etc uh, etc et now to what if I don't want a delete a folder but I just want to delete a one single specific file in this folder one of the folders that I already have but I don't want to delete the whole folder but I would just want to delete one specific item can you do that yes you can so I'm gonna clear the screen uh, I'm gonna again use the remove item remove item so it's the same commandlet but this time uh, with my uh, explicit uh, defined definition uh, within the quotes a uh, single quote I'm gonna say inside this test folder okay I want to delete doc one how did I do that I just press simply press the tab so it will tell you what uh, what stuff you have so if you want to delete doc one I simply put doc1.txt and now what this is going to do when I press enter is just simply delete that test doc1 there you go the doc1 is gone now what if I have this doc2 open and I'm working on it okay it's open and I'm working on it and now I go ahead here and I want to delete this doc2, but remember, I'm working on doc2. So someone is working on doc2. So if I'm gonna go here and then put doc2 and press enter, will it delete? Yes, it will. It will still delete because reason for that is, even though this is open, it is not actively looking for it. So if I press save here, 
you know, it's going to recreate that file. This is a brand new file that got created. So keep that in mind. Even if you have a user who had the doc to open, you know, it's not going to give you an error message. It's still going to go ahead and delete it because you're explicitly defining it to delete it and the system doesn't know I'm working on doc2. So I said I'm working on doc2 and it's not even saved and I can go ahead uh, while this file is open, I can go ahead and say delete that file. It will remove from the main, uh, you know, where the folder, where the location is. But when the user go ahead and save it again, it's going to recreate a new file with that same name. User doesn't even know that the file has been deleted in the background. So that's something uh, I need to warn everybody about. You can use remove item and administrative privileges in Windows PowerShell uh, 7, where your user may be using that file uh, and you may be still able to, uh, you know, delete it. Like if I open uh, the image file even here, uh, let's see if it works for that one too. It should work. So, G. Oh, it's image. Uh, what image did I delete? Oh, I want to delete image three. There you go. Image three got deleted. Image three is open, still got deleted. So keep that in mind. So when you're using remove item, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if the, you know, if the file is open or in, uh, unless it is a specific script that constantly using that file, it'll simply delete it. Now image three has been deleted. Now if I enter the command again, it will give you an error message. It'll tell you that the, the, the that file doesn't exist and it'll give you this red text error message as usual, but don't expect this type of error messages if the client, if your user is using that file, unless it's a, some kind of a specific file, uh, which is locked by uh, the user. So keep that in mind, especially with administrative privileges in command, uh, sorry, in Power Windows PowerShell, you have to be very careful. I'm running this PowerShell environment in a virtual machine, for a reason because I don't want to mess up my own computer, right? So it's PowerShell is very powerful. So uh, that's uh, what you need to know in terms of remove item. So the next thing uh, I will cover is moving files and folders. So instead of removing and copying, I just want to move items. So if I clear the screen here, so for the move item, again, there is a command let called move item. So if I type move item, so that's the command let for moving items. And you can move item from one folder to, to the another, right? So uh, we have these files in this test folder. So let's go up. So I have document three, four, uh, two. Let's create, uh, let's create a few more. So let's call doc one two, three, four. Okay. There you go. So now I have doc one, two, three, four and uh, image two. Okay. So that's the original folder. Test folders. So if I go up and I want to uh, move item um, from this test folder to, you know, the, I want to move this entire test folder to a new location, right? So if I can, uh, if I use the move item, just like copying, I can do the same thing. So if I'm gonna go test uh, folder, and if I do this, uh, put a space in here again, dot slash test folder. And if I press enter, this is gonna give me an error message. The reason for that is the test folder already exists here and you can copy test folder on top of a test folder it's going to mess, you know, it's going to give you an error message, right? So in order for you to move, you need to create a new folder. For example, if I put test folder one, if I do enter, what did I do? Well, it just moved the test folder on top of test folder and just rename the test folder. So keep that in mind on move item commandlet. If you do this, what it's going to do, uh, test folder one, what is uh, what is it going to do? It's going to take whatever the current folder, which is the test folder, it's just going to rename it. I mean, oh. Uh, 
uh, sorry it doesn't exist so why is that oh yeah test folder doesn't exist so i want to go test folder one i go test folder it's just going to rename this folder to test folder so it just basically copied on top of each other but you can't however uh do uh you know uh, copy like this where it's the same name however if you rename the folder if you, you can use the move item to in other words rename your folder that's what i want to tell you so that's how you know that keep keep that in mind that's one of the caveat about uh, caveat about um, move item commandlet now you may be asking like hey sanuja i want to just move uh, these items to a new folder. So how can you do that? Well, you can uh, again you can use the uh, command prompt. Uh, sorry, uh, Windows PowerShell, or you can simply create a folder here. I'm just going to simply create one. So I just call it a uh, test folder. Uh, let's say test folder two actually. So it's easy for you to understand. So now what I can do, I can use the same one, but I'm going to take it from test folder and put it into test folder two and press enter. What that did, it simply copied a mood items from the test folder and put it into test folder two, which already exists and got rid of that test folder. So now everything in the original test folder is in here, but notice what happened here. It copied the test folder to, so, sorry, test folder items, but it's inside another test folder. So it's basically copied this entire test folder into here. See what happened? So it basically copied everything in the test folder, but including the test folder into the into this file. Well, maybe that's not what you want. Uh, you probably want this test folder to be copied only the files in here, right? Uh, so keep in mind, if you use move item, this, this, this line of uh, command, what it's gonna do, it's gonna copy this entire folder and everything in it, and then put it inside the test folder too. When I press enter, it's just gonna simply move that file folder right here. So it just took the entire folder, including every content in it from our main location, C users SAN001 and move that to test folder two. So inside the test folder, they're gonna have another test folder, which is the original folder. Next thing I'm going to cover is renaming an item. Uh, which is exactly what it sounds like. The commandlet is rename dash item, verb noun pair. So we can use uh, rename dash item. So this way uh, we can rename, uh, you know, either a file or folder. So let's rename the test folder. So the main one. So I want to rename this guy to something else. Now, if I go ahead and rename, uh, I'm going to use the, again, quotation. I'm going to use single quote. You can use double quote if you want to. First, I need to re uh, define what I'm going to rename. So I'm going to rename the test folder. And then I have to tell it what to rename. So I'm going to call this one uh, test. So I'm going to rename test folder to test. Notice if I press enter, it just simply change test folder to test right there. Now, if a user is inside the test folder and working on something and you go ahead, in this case, it's, uh, it's just a test now and try to rename it uh, and press enter, it'll still do it. So if I go back in here, it just renamed my test back into test folder while I had a user uh, open a file contained within them. Now this user try to save it. It doesn't, it, that location no longer exists. So again, PowerShell is a very powerful tool. So when you're renaming items, you need to be careful with how you do those renaming uh, in your uh, script because you can end up with a situation where hundreds of users on your network are using these files and folders and you start renaming and doing stuff 
and you could mess things up. So be careful with that. So that's why I'm keep emphasizing and highlighting that important fact. The PowerShell is very powerful and it can do uh, you know things while the client or user is doing something else on the same files or folders. So next thing we're gonna look at is renaming a file. Uh, so to rename a file again, it's the same thing. You're gonna go rename um, dash uh, item. Again, you're gonna use the quotes. You can do double quotes or single quotes again. So now if I go test uh, folder and I want to rename, uh, let's say um, doc1.txt. Again, you had to give the complete path including the extension so you need to give the ex exact you know file name including the extension and then you need to again give what it needs to be uh, called so i'm going to call it uh, uh, a dot txt and now what's going to happen is this file going to get renamed so if i press enter it changed from doc1.txt to a dot txt if you don't put dot txt it's just gonna simply change it to something else so if i take let's say doc2 and if i don't put anything in here if i go b sorry n i accidentally press n it just created a file here so if i take that n again like another example of that i take n because n doesn't have an extension and i can make it uh, b dot D O uh, C D O C X is that a new new word file I think yeah open office XML file sorry that's an XML file uh, D O X C I think the other one so you can yeah but whatever Jack yeah, you just simply can change to whatever uh, you know file extension you like if you don't give a file extension just like before it's just going to create a file that doesn't have any association uh, 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 program associated program uh, within it so that's uh, that, that's something you should uh, learn and um, the next thing i'm going to show you uh, is that um, what, what what if i try to rename a file also, I'm going to quickly show you that. What if I try to rename a file that doesn't exist? So let's say it's say bb.txt and I want to name it as bb1.txt uh, uh, and if I press enter, it nicely display an error message saying that doesn't exist. This file doesn't exist in this folder. So it's going to come back with an error message. So that's again something pretty nice about Windows PowerShell. I'm going to clear this uh, screen again. Next thing I'm going to cover is retrieving data. So you have files and your files may contain lots of data and you want to retrieve that data back onto your screen or elsewhere. I have already covered this a little bit on my previous tutorial. So I'm just going to quickly go over it. So what I'm going to do, I will go to my document called a.txt. I'm going to paste a list of countries just a list of countries in the world. Uh, now that document has some lines in it. So it has a bunch of uh, stuff. It's all the countries in the world pretty much. Now, what I want to do is get that information printed onto my terminal or whatever the program I'm using uh, or in with the new script, we need to use it. So what for that, what we use is the get dash content, which I have used in my previous tutorial. And I'm going to use the single quotation again, dot slash, and I'm going to go test uh, folder. And I want a dot txt. And if I press enter, it's just going to print everything in that document. Because that dot txt file contain, uh, I just simply copy and pasted a bunch of um, uh, countries in here. And whatever the countries in that list got printed onto my screen so it's get content is the commandlet and then you can define uh, within single quotation or double quotation where this content needs to be taken out of so this content is coming from that file a.txt and it get printed onto our screen just like this it's very simple but 
uh, let's say I don't want all the countries in here printed here but I just want um, something like let's say I want the length of this file I can do that I simply need to do this I need to put a parenthesis uh, sorry uh, uh, um, I just need to put uh, not parenthesis uh, brackets in here and then if I put dot length length press enter it tells me there are 190 the 196 is the length so in other words there's 196 is the length of this file and uh, if we go to the bottom of this file click on it on the last last line it says 196 right here see 109 there are 196 lines in here by dot length what it did actually it shows me how many lines in here this is a useful one that I use all the time, especially when we are doing for loops and while loops, which we will cover maybe later. And uh, it tells me how big this the uh, you know the file is, right? So that way I don't write a code uh, a script that is away out of the range of this file. And also notice that if I go in here, um, line 196 have Zimbabwe and so 195 have uh, you know this and this this it's going down right when you're going up here it's going up so the line count is top to bottom that that is that is an important thing because what you can do is that if we go get content like that and uh, I just want uh, you know something like uh, you said different switch let's say total count say five so I'm gonna use a total count five that means it's gonna go from po po top and count the first five items in this uh, text document and print that so Afghanistan Albania Algeria uh, and uh, etc etc Angola all of this is the first five countries on that uh, document that's the first five lines of this document now uh, th these are count li as lines so if I put like for example I put more information in here let's say Albania 25 uh, let's see bar bar just a text uh, then um, country something like that a bunch of other stuff in this line and if I save it and if I count that it will print those ones items too whatever in that line get printed it's not just one word that's what I want to tell you it just print uh, everything on that line even though this only one word if it had more words in here if there's more content in front of it it will get printed as long as with the contain within that first five lines so if you want you know first one first first line you can do that and it'll just print the first line if you want first 10 lines it'll print the first 10 lines so that's a total count uh you know total count switch so that's there are multiple other switches like that you can use with this uh you can also do things like uh get uh, you know uh, you can do uh, another one called get uh, item instead of get uh, content we can go to get item and in here uh, we can use uh, this text file here and then combine the, the output of this with a, with a pipe remember the pipe command which I introduced long time ago and we can use get content and then go uh, tail one uh, that will return Simba base because if you go back down here Simba Bay is the last item on this file so it took it used the get item commandlet pipe the output of that into get content commandlet and then from tail end from the end of this it count one so if I want like for example United States I can count one two three four five six seven eight nine uh, so if I go I believe it's nine and then go nine it gets everything up to United States but not including United States because my count is wrong that's why uh, let me see one two three four five six seven eight nine no my count is right if it gets everything except the United States so if you want United States you have to include tail 10 
and it includes the United States right there. So it's just counting backward. So you can combine commandlet like this and do more things with it. So it's just a side note that if you want to know what you can do with this, you should read the Microsoft official documentation with uh, how you can uh, you know use this kind of thing. O again, you can also use another switch here. You, if you want to use heart switch, for example, right here and I press enter, it still works because it's a valid switch. So all of these different combination of get item and get content, uh, you will get to know as you learn more about PowerShell. So I'm just going to introduce that uh, to you here. Again, this tutorial is getting longer and longer. So the last thing I'm going to show you um, is that check folder or uh, folder existence using PowerShell. So there is a commandlet called test path. What test path commandlet is doing is it's going to check if that path exists. It's a Boolean uh, logic commandlet. So if I got test path uh, and if I want to know my test folder exists in the in here, C user sans 001 because my test folder is now deleted. If I press enter, it returns back false. Uh, if I go uh, here, if I go um, test folder, does it exist? Yeah, it's true. So this folder does exist. It's true, but test does not exist. So it's false. So it doesn't matter whether this this character is at the front or not. Uh, it just check for the name of that folder and it's going to check that. You can use this to verify if the information is there before you go ahead and try to perform anything with those files and folders. You can check, uh, you know, you can check if this is there before you act on it. So it's a very useful tool. I use it on my PowerShell script before I, I try to save or do anything. Uh, and you can use for if command, for loops, while loops, if command, if this, if this path exists, then run this code. If this path does not exist, else create that folder, then run this code. So that's why we use this for. So again, when it is not like when the, the test folder does not exist, it unfold. Uh, but if the test folder with this, you know, for example, even folder two, for example, because it's exists is return true. So this, these are Boolean logic and those can be very useful for creating PowerShell scripts uh, whenever you are working with them. That's everything for today. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to me. Please make sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, thank you so much.